What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're bringing back a deck that we haven't done here on the channel in a very long time and it recently got really really buffed post ban list. I know we took a little break from the post ban list deck profiles that's because the crystal beast stuff came out and I just wanted to have so much fun with that but we're back to the post ban list stuff because I think this deck is very very powerful as well as the ban list is actually now live so you guys can actually play this deck as soon as you guys see this video if you guys want to play it but I think this deck is very very cool but before we get into it make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we do deck profiles combo videos dual replays product openings all that good stuff right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed to tune into all of that so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that let's get into the deck profile so just before we get into this profile i do want to say big shout out to the boy alpha ygo he actually did a dogmatica video similar to this one this one takes inspiration from his this list is focused on picking apart your opponent's entire extra deck so with that being said, let's get into exactly how you do that with the start of the deck, which is Dogmatica Ecclesia. Three of them, of course. This is the best card, the card that puts the deck all together. It's an extender for you. You can special summon it when an extra deck monster is summoned. This card is insanely powerful, so you have to play three Dogmatica Ecclesia, of course. Now, this is the card that's a little bit different than most Dogmatica lists. This one specifically because it's a pure list that wants to focus on ripping apart your opponent's extra deck. You're playing three Dogmatica Maximus. Now, I know in most Dogmatica decks you're playing maybe one or two of this but in this one specifically you really want to play three of it because again you're just trying to get five six cards out of your opponent's extra deck on your first turn and then once that turn is set up your opponent is going to have a tough time playing through it because of the limited cards they have in their extra deck so that's why we're playing three Dogmatica Maximus however if you guys don't know how the effect works is during your main phase you can send two monsters with different names from your extra deck to the graveyard and then your opponent will also have to send two cards from their extra deck to the graveyard now the thing is with this if you're going against a tier limit player be careful because you don't want them to send Kikalos or something like that. However, in any other matchup, this card is really good, especially because you're going to be sending your own extra deck monsters. You're going to be sending Herald, which gets you access to more cards. You're going to be sending Garura, which is an upstart goblin. There are just so many good cards that you can access in this extra deck with these Dogmaticas that you can just send to the graveyard, get their effects off. So that's why you want to play three Maximus. Then we're playing two Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis is obviously a very powerful card. It's a negate, it's an extender, it boosts your monster's attacks. This card essentially is going to be how you're going for game in your turns two, turns three, turns four, etc. Right? And then we're playing three Nadir Servant. The card Card that just came to three on the most recent ban list. I'm so excited this card's at three now. This being at three, allowing you to send something like a Garura essentially makes the Deer Servant an engage, right? You're gonna be searching any card that you want, and then Garura is gonna get to add a card to your hand. So this card is insanely powerful. That's why we're playing three of it. Then we're playing one of the White Knight as well as one Relic. Now they both kind of have similar effects. White Knight, what it lets you do is when your opponent activates an effect, what ends up happening is you can take a look at your opponent's extra deck and send one monster from their extra extra deck to the graveyard so again you're just picking apart the extra deck and then white relic has the effect where if a monster is special summoned you can do the exact same thing so both of them are just going to be picking cards out of your opponent's extra deck your maximus is going to be picking cards out of your opponent's extra deck so you're really just going to be handicapping your opponent's plays as much as possible with these cards and they also allow you to play other cards in the deck that lets you thin a lot which is really really powerful we're also playing three dogmatic punishment this card is insane in just any format really and this card is just a really good card because you're also sending cards that are going to give you pluses to the graveyard right you're not just going to be sending entis all the time to pop two you're not always going to be sending entis to pop two sometimes you can send a garura sometimes you can send a titanic clad so dogmatica punishment is really powerful then you're playing one dogmatic calamity and two dogmatic Cabre. Okay, listen, I may be saying those names wrong. However, you're playing these ones because they do specifically say these two names in the names, in the effects, which is really powerful because it makes pre-preparation of rights live. Also, this is how you're going to be summoning these two, right? So you're going to be playing these. Then we're playing three Diviner of the Herald. Diviner is, of course, accessibility to a lot of things. It also gives you accessibility to the extra deck, where now you can summon a monster from the extra deck on your turn, which is going to trigger a lot of these effects that like you can summon your Dogmatica Ecclesia from your hand and then get its effect off and whatnot, right? So Diviner is really powerful in that. That sense then we're playing some hand traps the most relevant hand traps in the game today we're playing three ash boss on three dd crow as well as three imperm now i will say this and i don't usually say this in my videos but if you guys are watching this video in like a year and the ban list really hasn't changed anything in this deck you just swap out the hand traps for whatever is relevant in that format so if board breakers are relevant you can actually take out the hand traps like board breakers if floodgates are more relevant you can play floodgates if there's just different hand traps that are relevant you just play different hand traps so i just want to show you guys these nine slots are just the best hand traps of today's format but then again if 
you guys in the future see this, you can switch this up whenever you want. But so you're playing three Ash, three Crow, and three Imperm, and then you're playing three pre preparation of rights. This card is obviously very powerful because you're going to be getting to your ritual monsters. It helps go through your deck a lot faster. And deck thing is never a bad thing in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? You're going to be getting to all your cards. It's very, very consistent this build, especially with the pre preps. And then we're playing the one Pot of Avarice. Now, okay, you guys might be wondering why we're we playing Pot of Avarice. Now, first of all, I was actually at 39 cards when I was building this deck, and I was like, okay, maybe we could just put in an upstart, you know, make it 40 on the dot. However, I just thought about it and I was like, Pot of Avarice just makes a lot of sense. If you're going to be sending all your extra deck monsters to the graveyard for the effects of Maximus, for the Dear Servant, for Dogmatica Punishment, it just makes a lot of sense to actually just be able to put them all back so that you can use these effects again and again. So I think Pot of Avarice makes a lot of sense. It's a free draw tool for you. You're going to get monsters in the graveyard pretty quickly with this deck. So that's why I think Pot of Avarice as the 40th card was really powerful. We're playing the one called by the grave. Called by the grave, of course, is just a great card overall. Three Rivalry of the Warlords. If you guys haven't noticed, you can control one type of monster only, and the only types of monsters you have are spellcasters. So Rivalry is really good because it shuts out your opponents and it doesn't shut you out. So this card obviously is very, very powerful. And then one should all schism because if you get to this and you can set it up, what ends up happening is you make Winda and you're winning the game when you make Winda. So that's why we're playing the one should all schism. And then for the extra deck here, we're playing three Herald of the Arclight. Really, the extra deck is just built off of the best cards to send to the graveyard, as well as cards that are going to give you advantage, right? So three Herald of the Arclight going to give you advantage. This card's very powerful. Three Entis. Entis makes Dogmatica Punishment a pop two, which is really nice. Two Titanoclad. This gives you access to Dogmatica Ecclesia. Three Garura. Garu is just an upstart for you. We have one Op Cologne as well as one Winda. Op Cologne, of course, is going to help you get access to Winda. So that's very powerful. One Salaman Great Almirage as well as one Secure Garden. Now, now, why were we playing these two? Remember how I talked about Diviner being a very relevant card? What ends up happening is you can normal summon Diviner, and when you use its effect, and it's kind of just there for you. What ends up happening is you can just link away the Diviner into an Almirage, then into a Secure Garden. Now there's an extra deck monster on the side of the field, so now you can special summon your Dogmatic Ecclesia, get its effect to search either an Endears or a Punishment or whatever you need to search, and then you can continue from there. So Diviner makes these very live, which also makes your core very live. So that's it for the deck profile. I know this is kind of like a short deck profile there's actually not much to explain dogmatica is a deck that really always was used as an engine but now as a pure deck i think it can be very powerful again if you're ending on a board where you're ripping out five six cards from your opponent's extra deck and then you have a rivalry or you have a winda you've already handicapped your opponent because they don't have access to some of their cards in their extra deck but then you're going to be setting up a board where it's going to be really hard for them to break so i think this deck is very cool i think it's one of the cooler ways to play dogmatica now we don't want to normal summon alistar no more we want to summon ecclesia and we just want to get all the advantages in the world this deck is super super consistent again the dear servant now with a garura becomes an engage for you which is so powerful we literally have three sky striker engage in this deck it's just so great we have dogmatica punishment which is in disruption we have cards like pre-preparation which you're going to get cards out of your deck you're going to have diviner which sends your herald which is going to get other cards out of your deck it's very 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 powerful this deck very very consistent i think you guys should definitely try it out for yourselves so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now I know the deck might be a little bit different than your typical Dogmatica builds. However, I think this one's really cool because again, if you're ripping out your opponent's entire extra deck essentially, that is actually just a win con on its own because you're gonna be putting your opponent at such a handicap. But this deck also has other win cons, which is really cool. So I think you guys should try this deck out. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. We're on the road to 10,000. I know we can make it happen. I believe in this Mango Squad. Thank you guys all for watching. I, I really appreciate you from bottom of my heart. But with that, guys, Spankos, I don't know. Peace.